Julie, Faith Van Balzer, and I'm so excited to have Joe Rotella with me today. He's always a great guest, but we have a really special project today based on some fascinating education on bees, and you have really gone down a rabbit hole. You know a lot about bees now. It's true, it's true. There are about 25,000 species of bees around the world, and we all think of honeybees and bees that make nests. Those are social bees. That's only 2%. 98% of those bees are solitary bees. They live all alone. I had never heard of solitary bees before. It's true, it's true. There's a male and a female. They don't have like a worker bee and all that. Every female, every female is a queen. Oh, well, I like that. So the males live for about two weeks. We're talking about mason bees in this case. And then the female lives for about 60 days and she lays her eggs in little tubes. So we're gonna make a house of those little tubes. Cool. So I've got my table saw set up. I keep the blade lowered just for safety purposes. And I'm so gonna put on my safety glasses. I just course. have to raise the blade up. You don't want it sticking out super far, just enough to clear that's a thin that piece wood. Of wood. This is a quarter inch and I need uh, pieces, four of them, about seven inches long, but don't worry because all the patterns are up on the website. Cool. So what I've done here is I've set a guide, a stop, so that I can get four pieces the same size. And this is connected to the vacuum to suck out all the sawdust. So here we go, we're gonna do four pieces just like this. So there's our four. We need another piece that's just about an inch bigger. And so it's not even something that I have to be very precise. I'm just gonna move that gauge out of the way and do it again. Cool. Ready? So we have all of our pieces of wood. Now, we have the four sides that'll make like a tunnel. Okay. And then a back, and I want a little arch on the back. So I made a pattern. You can download it on the website. You can see I cut this way more right. than I needed. And we're just gonna draw that curve. Better to cut it too big than too little, in my opinion. What is that, measure twice? Measure twice, cut, cut once, once, but I also think it's about like, if you're so worried about wasted materials, at least in my experience, I often make a huge mistake and then I end up wasting more materials, you know? Now I've lowered this guide already, so it's just above the wood. And this is another kind of saw, right? This is a band saw, so the blade is a big loop. If I didn't lower that, this could bounce. Okay. Now it hits that, it won't bounce. that we can basically fit a wood shop on a table. It's I true. mean, that's super cool, right? It's true. And I also think it's great for all of those projects where you want to, you know, do stuff at home, but you don't necessarily have the space for it. I love that idea. So, now we have the back, right? And I could use this piece. I need just a little curve to make the front. There's a pattern okay. I would cut that out, but I have one already done for us here. We're done with the bandsaw. So I'm just gonna move him. By the way, how hilarious how is it that you can pick up a bandsaw by and yourself? Just because it. I've seen <laughs> bandsaws that there's just no way. We're gonna what use is that? this next. This is the chop saw. So it does just like it thinks. Just chop. so I'm clear, right? So we use a table saw to cut straight cuts. We use the bandsaw to cut the circle cuts. What is the difference with the chop saw? You know, the chop saw is great if we're cutting round things because it'll fit right here in the little vise. Oh. So let's glue this together or start. Okay. And I'm gonna use you to help. Yes. Are you ready? Yes, tell me what to do. So we're gonna glue the bottom, mm -hmm. the side, 
and the back. Now you gave me a tip, which is you have to put the side in a certain position, right? Instead of on the outside, we're going on the inside. That raises the sides up and it makes the house look more Tall and rectangle. narrow. Tall and narrow, that's There you good. go. Don't we all want to be tall and narrow? I am tall, aren't I yes, tall and Yes, you narrow? are, yes you are. I keep saying we should have a platform down here. So I look <laughs> tall in there, but nobody listens. So you're gonna use uh, wood glue, I assume. Yeah, and it's a very quick drying glue. Okay. And so then, oh, you put a bead on both sides? Well, because we're gonna do the sides and the back. Why don't oh. you stick that on or hold it for okay. one second while I do Oop. this bottom piece. I'm trying to glue you now too. Don't glue me. <laughs> so when we put this all Ready. together, okay, so now I just put this you straight just put on here. down and okay. we're gonna line it up with the back. And you know, it's a bee house. It's yes. not cu kitchen cabinets, so. So if it's a little wonky, it's okay. I'm a little wonky. Well, I always say things in nature are a little wonky, right? So we would let this dry. Do you want me to hold, hold that? It, hold it for like a minute. Okay. And I've already got one done. Oh, well then I don't need to hold this, do I? <laughs> and I was gonna stain this. Way. I stained parts of it and I thought, no, I don't wanna do the stained part. So we're just gonna use the wood part. Okay. And we can glue these pieces on. Okay. I'm gonna use some that I already have ready to go down Great. here. Great. And we're gonna put, remember we're doing this on the inside. I see that. And it doesn't matter whether you put the wood on the piece of wood you're gluing it onto or on the yeah. base. It's sort of whatever, yeah? So if you can put that on the inside and hold it a second. Okay, I will hold this for you. So mason bees are so important because they can pollinate about the same amount as a hundred honeybees. Really? That's why we want them in our vegetable gardens, in our farms, in our orchards. Mm -hmm. And it's all because of how they pollinate. Okay, what does that mean? Well, honeybees are fastidious. Okay. So when a honeybee goes into a flower, she, the worker bee goes very carefully in the flower and gets pollen all over its belly. And then he licks it and they lick it down to their legs. They don't like it on them, but that makes it sticky. The nice part about that is they're able to carry it all the way back to the hive and none falls off. Mason bees, they're the funky ones. <laughs> they dive bomb in the flower and they're like, and they belly flop all over, it goes all over. They don't wet it. When they fly to the next flower, a lot of it falls off. That's oh. why they're pollinating so many flowers. So instead of it being sticky and being taken back to the hive, it's just being dumped into the next place that exactly, they land. Exactly, exactly. And now since you've seen me wiggle, yeah. that was pretty good. That, that might have dried that. Ooh. So now we're gonna put the top on. Okay, and so the mason bees, I know that you said that they um, are solitary, so I assume that means that, why are we making so many tubes? Because they don't live in a hive, right? They don't. What happens is a mason bee, if you wanna hold that yeah. for a sec, that would be great. A mason bee will make about 20 trips to get pollen. They then bring it into the, a tube. They build up a pea size nugget of pollen. Then they lay an egg. Then, because they're called mason bees, they go out and find clay, wet clay. So wherever you place this house, make sure that there's wet clay dirt available for them to build a little wall. They section it off. And they'll put about 10 of those little chambers in a tube. That tube is all summer growing from a larvae to a bee, but they don't come out. In the fall, let's see if we can stick that on. You might have to. Hold that too. There you go. I got it. In the fall, you can take these tubes out and clean them. And this is where people make a big mistake. They buy houses because they're pretty in the store, they make their own, they use PVC pipe or bamboo. The problem with that is when you take those tubes out, you can't cut them open to take out the cocoons. You'll damage them. So the ideal material is lake bed reeds because they're the right size hole, the hole's too big, they don't like it, it's too small, they don't like it. So we've got those here. And the, I've pre-cut these. One end has a chamber already. This okay. goes to the back. And you want these to be about six to six and a half inches in length. Now we're ready to make the roof. And these lake, red, lake bed bee reeds, by the way, it's a tough one to say, that's what they look like. Mm. So now we need to make a roof. I'm okay. just gonna move this out of the way. I think that's probably dry. Okay. You can probably let go. Oh, it is. And I'm gonna give you some of these. I'm gonna mm -hmm. cut these, oh, eight inches or so. So I've got the chop saw mm -hmm. set up. I've got a little gauge down here. <laughs> and how about I pass them to you and you just hot glue them, keep the back flat. Okay. Because we wanna be able to hang our house. Am I putting them across or am I putting them the this way? way? And you okay. just go all the way around this tunnel okay. and you'll make a nice little roof. Cool. 
We want that overhang to protect these from dampness. When you hang your house, you always want to hang it on a southern wall or an eastern wall so it gets that morning sun. It's that heat that'll wake them all up. Mm. But back to the fall, we're going to cut those tubes open, take out the cocoons, get away, throw away any damaged ones. They could have mites or a parasite. Okay, how do you know? Can you just You'll see it? You'll tell. Yeah, they'll have okay. a hole or something. They'll look funny. Put the clean ones in a covered plastic container in your fridge. And in the spring, take them out when it's about 55 degrees. It doesn't degrees. kill them to be it, in the fridge? They like the cold. Interesting. It, they'll be dormant. You're going to keep them in the fridge, take them outside at about 55 degrees. Make sure you have enough flowers for them to have pollen because they'll only fly about 300 feet radius from the house. Wow. So if you put them where there's no flowers, you basically put them in a food desert. Interesting, and if we look at the finished houses that you brought, we can see how cute they are. And you, I noticed that you varied the lengths of the reeds. Is there a reason? Because that's how a mason bee can tell what reed they're filling up. They can go by the different depths. And some people even blow torch the front so there's markings, just like we'd have road signs. Oh, so it's like you can actually know which one is your house. Exactly. I love that. I've learned so much about bees, so much about woodworking. This has been so great, Joe. Thank you so much. You're welcome.